any technical difficulties, please let us know by using the chat box. Uh, we welcome any. Uh, we welcome you to submit comments at any time during today's webinar. Uh, please save your questions for the presenters at the end. Our speakers will take your questions during the Q&A period at the end of this session. Today's webinar will uh, will be available on the Ensemble site later during the week. Uh, when you're checking in, please help us um, identify the best topic for our next video on the Immigrant Perspective video series. So we're going to be creating more videos for this section and would like your input on this. So through uh, these five-minute videos, we aim to share with career seekers, new Canadians, and Canadians as a whole some interesting and little understood aspects of working in Canada's mining industry from the perspective of immigrants working here in Canada. So uh, we are filming another video, like I said, but uh, we want, to, I want, would like you to tell us what you think we should explore, who we should feature, and where to find them. So it's an important insider tidbit, and maybe you can get involved as well. So right now, our top three ideas for this video are environmental careers in mining, research and innovation in mining, and successful immigrant w women working in mining. Um, every time we receive a comment from you on video ideas, we will get this will get you one entry into a draw to win a delegate pass of your choice to either PDAC convention in Toronto, to CIM convention in Montreal, or the Untapped Breakfast series um, and gala that's being held in Vancouver. Uh, we also want to give everyone a chance to continue this conversation in per person, so we will be hosting an in-person meetup at PDAC in Toronto on March 7th. So come out, uh, meet some like-minded people, and have a drink all for free. <laughs> and go to the, uh, you can go to the ensemble calendar to RSVP to this event. So again, for March 7th. Uh, I encourage everyone to participate participate and don't forget to invite your colleagues and uh, networks to join our ensemble community. So um, we'd like to welcome everyone and thank you for joining us on this Valentine's Day webcast to learn about, be inspired by, and perhaps even fall in love with community and industry collaboration. Um, like I said, my name is Pascal Larouche and I'm the senior project the Senior Program Manager for the Mining Essentials Program here at MIR. Um, MIR's uh, mandate is to identify and ad address the HR and labor market challenges and opportunities for Canadian minerals and metals sector. We collaborate with mining and exploration uh, companies, organized labor, contractors, educational institutions, industry, industry associations, and Aboriginal groups. We are proud to feature successful inclusion initiatives and today's presentation on Aboriginal Mining and Skilled Trades Entry Project, so the AMSTEP project, is certainly one of those. To provide a bit of context for today's webcast, um, I'll share that in 2015, Mir estimated that there were around 13,000 Aboriginal workers in the mining labor force. Aboriginal people represent a critical talent source for the mining sector, especially considering the proximity of many mining operations to traditional lands. Offering min meaningful employment opportunities for Aboriginal people becomes an important element in maintaining a social, social license to operate. As with all Ensemble's webcasts, we have brought in experts to share their insights and know-how. Today, we are joined by Gordon Kagigamik of Oshki Pamachuan in Thunder Bay and Joyce Spence of Gold Corp Muscle White Mine. With over 20 years of experience managing projects in innovation and technology, Gordon is an experienced project manager that has brought positive changes to First Nations communities and organizations in the Anishinaabe Oshki Nation. Gordon has a background in computer science from Lakehead University and has applied this education to further the effective use of IT for First Nations peoples living in remote communities who face multiple barriers to education and training opportunities. 
He has a passion for collaborating with industry and creating opportunities for First Nations youth living in remote northern communities. Joyce Spence is Gold Corp Muscle White Mines First Nations Human Resources Specialist. Joyce has years of experience working with First Nations peoples and First Nations communities. A Cree from the James Bay area, her work experience includes working at a national, provincial, and community level in the capacity of project management, community services, trainer, educator, and human resources. Joyce has worked with companies that has had agreements with First Nations, both in the construction and mining sector, to ensure that First Nations are actively involved in all phases of development and operations. Joyce is a former believer that when given the opportunity, our youth and First Nations communities can meet and exceed the challenges before them. We will hear from Gordon and Joyce for the next 40 minutes or so, followed by a Q&A session with all of you. So let's begin with Gordon. So Gordon, I'll turn it over to you. If you can please talk to us about our, your AMSTED project. Thank you, Pascal. Uh, can everybody see my presentation? Do I have control now, Bridget? No, Bridget's going to flip through your slides, Gordon, and everybody can see them. Okay. All right, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, members of Assemble, the Mining Diversity Network. I'd like to uh, take some time to go through our presentation. A lot of these slides have more to do with the, the project itself, more like uh, providing a, a description of the project, but Joyce and I will speak to the theme of this webinar, and that's uh, diver diversity in the, uh, the work workplace or diversity in the mining industry for, for our people. <clears throat> so I want to talk about a little bit about Ashki, who we are. Uh, next slide. So Ashki Pumachwin, we're like, um, I guess we're like an Aboriginal college. We're an uh, Aboriginal and post-secondary education and training institute. Uh, we were established by the Nan Chiefs. We are part of Anishinaabeaski Nation in, in Northern Ontario. Arshkumachwin means a new beginning in our language. So our mission is to be the leader in providing excellence in post-secondary education and training by meeting the needs of really of our people and our communities in the Anishinaabeaski Nation. So this is our, this is the Anishinaabe Aski Nation. NAN is actually a PTO, Provincial Territory Organization. It's also a land mass. <clears throat> so pretty much NAN covers most of Northern Ontario and we have 49 communities. And we get our direction from our elders and our NAN chiefs, that's uh, Grand Chief Stan Beardy, former Grand Chief. Uh, so we get our direction from, from our, our leaders in our communities. Next slide. Uh, my name is Joyce Spence, and I work with the uh, Gold Corp uh, Muscle White Mine, which is north of uh, Thunder Bay. We, ha we are a fly in, fly out uh, mine site. Uh, we all we're also on the traditional territory of the Weagamal uh, Lake First Nations, also known as uh, North Caribou and Round Lake. Uh, with um, Within the, our uh, company itself, we have uh, extended our mine life to at least 8 to 15 years. So it's a, a big commitment that we had invested when we uh, joint ventured with uh, Oshki in regards to the Amstep program. We also have four gold mines across Canada. Our vision uh, is working together, making sure that we uh, uh, have a sustainability, not only with our company, but with those that we work alongside with and having a partnership with the First Nations communities and also the, the city of Thunder Bay and surrounding areas. Go ahead, next slide. Um, uh, as I said, we're 480 kilometers north of north, uh, Thunder Bay. Uh, our, um, we have a muscle weight uh, agreement with the four, four signatories, which is Round Lake, Cat Lake, Wenaman Lake, and uh, Wenham, uh, Kingfisher Lake. Also with two uh, tribal councils, uh, Windigo Tribal Council and um, Shibugama. So we're located right in the middle of uh, the surrounding communi communities that I had mentioned, and Pickle Lake is our road access. 
this is the beginning early stages of our of our mindset <clears throat> all right so I'll just give a quick overview of what exactly is AMSTEP so I've been working with Gold Corp for um, pretty much seven years now I actually got my start in, back in 2008 like like the introduction said, Pascal, I do have a background in computer science. I, I wear a lot of hats here at Oshki, but one one thing I do bring to to Oshki is um, I like to describe myself as an innovator. So I I don't do computer science per se. I do e-learning, but what I do is create partnerships and create programs for for our people. Uh, so those are the beginnings of working with Gold Corp. This was back in 2000. 2009, 2010. Next slide. So AMSTEP um, is a work, youth workforce development program. We do target youth aged from 18 to 29. And <clears throat> what we try and do is stimulate and support youth workforce development in, in our First Nation communities in the Anishinaabe Aski Nation. So there's actually three aims to the program. The first aim is to develop the voice. A lot of times you don't hear the voice of First Nations youth, you hear the voice of government, uh, First Nations leaders and industry. And the mining industry has its own language, so these youth need to learn how to talk the talk. And we try and give them that uh, that voice so that they can speak to their employment counselors in the communities and really industry. We also build their knowledge, skills and attitudes. Again, we do this through our core training intervention, Mining Essentials through, through MIR. Next slide. We also support uh, transitions <clears throat> when they complete the ANSTEP program. Uh, it doesn't end there for them. It's just opening a new door. And we transition them into either ACE, the Academic and Career Entrance Program, where we transition them to um, entry level employment at the Gold Court Muscle Light, or we transition them into post secondary education and training. This is just a, uh, it's almost like a roadmap. I, I show these to the youth. It really just shows them the pathway uh, from where they're starting from. <clears throat> Usually a lot of these youth are um, living in their communities and they have tried high school in the urban centers like Thunder Bay and they, they re have to rethink their ambitions. So they're kind of uh, idle in their communities. And what I try and do is just show them <clears throat> the pathway that they can get a job in the mining industry using this chart. So really, AMSTEP is all about jumpstarting our youth, <clears throat> and uh, we kind of, uh, AMSTEP is, does things a little bit backwards. Mainstream education, you have to go through high school, elementary school, high school, then, then transition to the workforce. We, uh, we do it a little bit backwards. We kind of introduce them to the industry first, the training and work experience, then we put them through, through a grade 12 equivalency program. Um, just a little bit on our project organization. So it's myself and Joyce, <clears throat> we're, we're the lead for this project. We also have community coordinators in each community. Next. And again, we have uh, our signatory communities that we work with. Also, Nishki Gogeming is a participatory community. Next. Uh, we do hire our own trainers, so we have both subject trainers and industry trainers. Okay. <clears throat> so this is the uh, intake from Weagamal Lake in Winneman Lake. This is actually a group photo from the Gold Court Muscle Lake Mine. Okay. We do have a steering committee comprised of all our partners. Okay. So this is the actual program delivery. <clears throat> we do the six um, activities or deliverables. So we do a recruitment, we do orientation, skill training, work experience. Uh, we do have a graduation and we, when we do the transition. Okay. So participant recruitment. <clears throat> uh, so both Gold Corp, Oshki and our partners, we travel to the remote communities. These are fly-in communities and we deliver a three-day workshop. So we, we spend the entire week with the youth in the community and part of the workshop is, is uh, giving them enough information and knowledge to make a decision 
whether or not they want to pursue a career in mining. So at the end of the third day, each youth needs to make a decision whether or not they want to apply to this program. <clears throat> Next. So this is just an example of uh, the three-day workshop. So uh, I, I guess one of the more important workshops is the muscle light agreement. A lot of you don't know what the muscle light agreement is about and how it can benefit them. This is something they need to know and they need to take advantage of that opportunity presented in those agreements, the uh, training and employment opportunities. <clears throat> so these are workshops that we conducted in the past year, two years, and just tells you the number of youth that participated in these workshops and the number of youth that actually applied to the program. We're actually beginning our next intake here in Thunder Bay starting next month. So we've been delivering uh, AMSTEP and the Mining Essentials programs for three, four years now, and we I think this is our fifth or sixth intake we're doing. <clears throat> Next. This is a shot of North Caribou Lake in the U, Cunnaman Lake, Cat Lake, Kingfisher Lake, and the Michigogan. So the typical youth profile, they're all unemployed, they're out of school, aged 18 to 29, <clears throat> and majority do not have their grade 12. So the majority have either grade 9 or 10. And the majority are on software assistance. So we do have a steering committee that um, reviews all the applications and we select uh, uh, 18 or 16 candidates based on the intake size. Next. Uh, these are just some of the findings. Uh, we did an evaluation of <clears throat> we do an evaluation of each intake, and these are just some of the findings regarding the uh, the recruitment workshops. Uh, we need to identify learning disabilities as part of the uh, recruitment workshop. We do have uh, students that do have a learning disability. Uh, for example, hearing impair impairment for one youth, we discovered that after the fact, <clears throat> um, they need to be physically fit. Um, some of the youth are actually on uh, the boxing program, so that's a very sensitive area with uh, <clears throat> the community. Um, also, we need to be more objective with our selection. We need, we need uh, to establish criteria. And it's really hard to be um, objective because um, you can have a grade 12 student who's really bright, but their work ethic could be really negative, so, so those things you need to identify as part of the selection. And also uh, <clears throat> more information on the individual, their medical history, that sort of stuff. Next. On the orientation program, uh, we have a meet and greet, greet and uh, we go through the AMSTEP program, what's it all about, and uh, making sure that there's an understanding of their commitment that the participants need to make. Um, we go through the orientation of the manual, mining essentials from uh, binder. And one of the requirements that we do have, uh, if you were to be part of the program at Gold Corp Muscle White, we're, uh, we're all subject to uh, a medical, pre-employment medical that includes drug testing. Um, and everyone that comes to uh, Gold Corp Muscle White must pass this this portion of, uh, of our, our, our process in order to, for us to work at Gold Corp Muscle White. And once at the site, we have site and induction trainings. We have um, induction as visitors and then uh, having, having access to the site. There's uh, various inductions there. And we also have to have the WIMIST and a couple of other uh, uh, tickets that we uh, allows us to go to any place on the mine site. Our first intake here is uh, uh, with Round Lake and uh, Wenaman Lake. Um, once again, it was the first time actually the students, the participants were on uh, on site at a mine site. Um, so with these two groups, even though they're close in uh, proximity of communities, they were not. Uh, they they don't know each other. There's two different cultures there. One is Ojibwe and one is Ojibwe. So it was like uh, making a, a relationship, building building the communication gap at their language. One group was uh, their first language was uh, Ojibwe. The second group was more English than their Ojibwe. 
So these were some of the things that we identified when working with the young people. And also uh, like work ethics, as Gordon mentioned, uh, having to be at the mine site, uh, having to get up at four o'clock to make breakfast hall and then getting to the lineup of safety talks in the morning and then going into our job site. One of the things too is uh, in order for the participants to uh, identify the success of the pre-med, we went into the communities with our nurse and did our drug testing there. And so that when we came to the, when they were able to come to the mindset, they were site that they were able to pass it rather than having to face the, that they were there a couple of days and that they leave because they did not pass the, the drug test. Another area was um, our young people. Uh, there seemed to be a high rate of anxiety, um, probably because of the culture is totally different. At a mine site, the expectations of having to work in a structural environment compared to being at home, um, being at the mine site, safety is a, a big requirement, especially those that don't have adequate training and uh, work ethics. So we had to monitor our young people and sort of keep them in a group. And these were things as a, a as the first few days on site, we were able to identify these things. And it wasn't until um, we seen the pattern of how they were acting, they wouldn't speak up and say that they're going through this. It was like we had to I, um, sort of like uh, ask questions and see why they were late. And it wasn't until the, after the fact that they were dealing with quite a, quite a um, heavy load or social issues, I guess you can say. All right, so this is our skills development framework. This, this is basically the AMSTEP program. So like I said, giving them a voice, we focus on mining literacy. Uh, we also do the safety training, the site induction training with Gold Corp. We deliver the mining essentials through, through MIR. We also focus on pre-trade. Uh, we previously partnered with Cambrian College. We used their mobile trades training trailer. We, we uh, physically brought that trailer up to the Muscle White Mine so that they can do the free trades in a safe environment. We also focus on culinary, culinary training. <clears throat> uh, we do a business uh, workshop because some of these youth want to start their own business in their community. We also do a job search workshop so that they can do resume writing, interviewing, that sort of stuff. And we do the work experience, which is very, very important to their, um, <clears throat> to this program. Next. All right, so all the training occurred on the muscle white mine. So this is that, the, the mining essentials, this is the first time it's been delivered entirely at a mine site, at the muscle white mine in Northern Ontario. So like I said, all the, the all the youth flew from their home communities to the to the mine site. This was very important because Gold Corp wanted to graduate <clears throat> youth who are already uh, acclimatized to to the work environment. So that, that includes being mobile, being able to fly two weeks in, two weeks out. So this is basically the schedule. There's just three months of uh, skills training interventions and two months of work experience. So it's about uh, 20, 20 weeks of this training and work experience that, or 800 hours that they must go through. <clears throat> Next. Uh, mining literacy. Uh, youth perception of mining, that's one of the, I guess, I guess that's one of the challenges of, <clears throat> of the youth is that they get their perception, they get their understanding of mining through really through film, TV. Um, this is a screenshot of Avatar. So a lot of youth get false information from really from Hollywood. <clears throat> and we're trying to change that perception and behavior among the youth. Uh, so yeah, bridging the mining literacy gap between industry and community. Next. How do we do that? Well, we actually delivered a learning to mine portal, learning to mine.ca. <clears throat> is a youth portal for First Nations youth that just develops their mining literacy skills. Next. And here it is, the learning to mine portal. I'm not going to go through that. Next. <clears throat> Next. Okay, at the site induction, we have, uh, as I mentioned before, we have inductions where we ensure the individuals understand uh, the importance of safety and the dangers that do exist. We have our we had our Gold Corp trainers present them as they were uh, uh, regular employees. They would get the same inductions. Um, 
we gave them the WEMIS, uh, even though that it was part of the program, we still had to give them a, a refresher, I guess you can say, and uh, um, they learned uh, WEMIS online as part of their mining essentials through NORCAT eLearning. And the mining essentials. Okay. <clears throat> so this is the core training intervention, the mining essentials program. <clears throat> 12 weeks of training, 360 hours. Uh, it's 240 hours in class, so they're sitting in a classroom uh, learning from those 11 modules. The other 120 hours is what we call enrichment activities, so that's basically what they trade, the you know, first aid, the job search workshop, and the business workshop. Uh, <clears throat> so we do focus on life skills and essential skills. Next. So this is basically the uh, program delivery for mining essentials, the modules. Again, like I said, all the training occurred at the Mosaic mine. Uh, the LMS, that's, that's new to uh, the mining essentials program. We actually piloted the LMS. It's really important that these youth know how to use an LMS because when they transition to post-secondary, Every college, every university uses an LMS there. It's a very beneficial and transferable skill for these youth. Next. <clears throat> so there's actually a difference between how we deliver post-secondary programs and how we deliver the AMSTEP program. Post-secondary programs here at Oshki, we deliver using a campus-based approach. Basically, our our uh, students travel from their home communities to Thunder Bay and they spend two weeks on campus. And they go home to their home communities and they take um, e-learning. With AMSTEP, we actually deliver the training program entirely on-site at the Muscle Lake Mine. And if it's, uh, <clears throat> if it's not doable to do it at the Muscle Lake Mine, for example, in Mishki Gogeming, we, we use a community-based approach, but they still do their work experience at the Muscle Lake Mine. So these are just some of the findings of our program delivery, <clears throat> the AMSTEP program. So we do need tutors or teaching assistants to support the learners. <clears throat> it's not enough to have uh, just one instructor or one trainer on site at all times. We really need a tutor to, to work with the students. Uh, we need to incorporate the safety lineups in the morning <clears throat> before going to the training room. Again, it's all about being acclimatized to the work environment. <clears throat> we also need to hear the safety messages during these lineups. Again, safety is a big uh, <clears throat> requirement at Muscle Way. Uh, we also need to connect participants back to the land. Uh, <clears throat> basically, when you're at the Muscle Way mine, you're either in your bunk room or you're at the workplace. And the students, basically, they go back and forth between their bunkhouse and the training room, day in, day out. So what we really need to do is int or introduce more land-based programming, just getting them out. <clears throat> also, um, anxieties. That's a big issue with our, with our youth participants, anxieties. Um, a lot of youth had to go to the nursing station to address their anxiety. And that's something we really need to work on because uh, <clears throat> these youth, when they graduate and they get entry level employment at muscle like mines, those, those issues still <clears throat> manifest itself. So it's something we need to work with uh, Gold Corp and the communities with addressing the workplace retention. Next. The trade. Um, <clears throat> One of the things about uh, pre-trades, uh, our goal at Gold Corp Muscle White was to uh, we would prepare the individuals, the youth in the field of mining, and they were exposed right from the beginning, day one, the work hours, which was a 12-hour shift. They were able to tour the mine site, go underground, and give them a field of the, what types of trades that existed on site. and. Um, one of the things that we do have is a pre-apprentice uh, trade program, and hopefully that some of these OSHKI participants would be able to participate. Uh, one of the things we encouraged them was that they needed a grade 12 math. So these were some of the things that we'd uh, uh, encourage them when they're finished this uh, 
this AMSTEP program that they would uh, uh, qualify for pre-entry and they would have that mine, mine terminology in them and the expectations of being at a mine site. Um, so this encouraged them. You could see uh, lights go on. Their eyes were just in awe when they were exposed to underground, not only in underground, but the various trades that we have on surface, which was mechanic, uh, millwrights, and uh, carpentry, plumbers, and uh, and then also the culinary trade. So uh, it did give them a, a, a sort of like that, uh, I'll say, tip their toes in the, in what uh, uh, mining is all about. So this was giving them an opportunity with the trades trailer. They were able to touch uh, touch in each of the trades that we have uh, available at the mine site. And I think what was, what hit uh, uh, well with them was the welding aspect of the, the trades and actually building something with their hands that both uh, intakes were able to make a, a sled which included all the aspects of trades, carpentry, millwright, welding, and then the, the hydraulics. How does it work with the, 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 the bar that's attached to the sled that you attach to your skittles? So uh, they were uh, exposed to the the different trades. Uh, the uh, kudos off to that kudos to the trainer um, who was very well versed in all the trades, and and he was also uh, once uh, an employee with Gold Corp Muscle White. So he included the safety aspects of all the trades. And once again, number one is trades. We wanted to ensure each and every everybody that comes to the site goes home uh, safe without any. Uh, harm to themselves. Um, the mo mobile train free trades, um, um, out of the students, uh, it, it, they didn't uh, realize what uh, mining was all about, considering that it was in their back door. We're on the traditional territory of, of Round Lake, and this is uh, half of the group here in this picture are from Round Lake, and some of it uh, belongs to their grandfather's land. And to see that happening in the back door of their, of their community is an eye-opener. And I must say that it, it, um, it allowed them to uh, um, put something together right from scratch. They uh, were typical uh, piece of paper, designed their sled and, uh, and uh, designed uh, the, on, the, on their box sled. Which is, and a box sled is quite purpose, uh, useful in the community because a lot of them still live off the land by getting wood. So that uh, their sleds were, uh, I think they were fighting over them with, uh, with who was going to buy them off them and whatnot. So. It was a, a good uh, learning ex experience for them. And this is the type of the trades that we, they were exposed to at the trade trail. So these are just pictures of the uh, pre trades training. So some of the findings with the trailer and the pre trades training is um, <clears throat> um, so. I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with these mobile trades training trailers. They're actually in use across the country uh, through uh, Ontario colleges. And uh, I know Cambrian College had a trailer, <coughs> and uh, Red River College in Winnipeg also has a trailer. There's a number of colleges across the country that have these trailers. And basically, what these trailers do is they allow uh, the school to bring training to the community, directly to the community. So we actually used Cambrian's trailer and delivered it at the Muscle White Mine and we did the pre-trade training there. Oshki, we also are actually in the process of acquiring and building our own mobile trade training trailer. It's actually in production down in Toronto, so we're expecting delivery in August. And we're going to use that trailer to offer uh, skilled trades and specialized training to, to our communities and our people. So this trailer is a new way of really training. It's a new paradigm. Uh, so a lot of our people, our communities are just, they don't really have an understanding or awareness of these trailers. So that's one of the things we need to do here at Oshki. <clears throat> uh, and also linking the training with um, accredited college curriculum. So we're actually working with Northern College as we speak with uh, free trades curriculum. Next. Culinary, not everybody wants to be a miner. Every mine site has its own cafeteria and kitchen facility. So a lot of these youth are interested in a career in the culinary in industry. So we partner with Wendigo Catering at the Muscle Lake Mine. Next. Uh, 
Um, we're not going to go into the culinary next. <clears throat> okay, like I said, a lot of these youth, uh, they're really interested in setting up their own workshop in their community, so we introduced them to NADF, their uh, financial service agency here in Thunder Bay. Basically, NADF funds entrepreneurs or, or business people who are starting up their own small business. We also partner with Yes Employment here in Thunder Bay. So a lot of these youth, we, we try and train them to be mobile. So they need an understanding and awareness of these employment agencies in the urban centers because they don't exist in the community. So that's one thing we try and do is introduce them to <clears throat> these employment Ontario, <clears throat> employment Ontario agencies. Next. The work experience, uh, once again, uh, they were exposed to actual live mine site workplace. Uh, they were doing the two week two, two and two, which is two weeks on and two weeks off, uh, 28 days at 12 hour shift. They were provided a work experience age and we also age wage, wage of $15 and gold car plus a white top that up to 22, 20, 20, 20, 20 to $22 an hour. So, and the training participants were matched up with the mentors. They chose the trade that they would like to maybe uh, ex uh, experience or be exposed to, and they matched up with each department, which were the mechanics and electrical. We also had the security opportunity and environmental, so every uh, department they were uh, able to access. So the first rotation, they would do two weeks with uh, one department, and then uh, the second uh, week uh, coming into the to the mindset they were exposed to one another and we did that uh, we did a change up and we did them one week in a, uh, a one trade and another week in a trade so that they had more exposure to the various trades at the mine site. Uh, one of the things that we do have at, um, at Muscle White is uh, our magazine uh, the scoop uh, just to inform the community members not only the community members but the, those that work at Muscle White we do have uh, approximately 700 employees on site that when uh, we run a 24-hour cycle of mining so uh, when they see these young guns with uh, the yellow helmets they're their learners their students and trainees and they're given more courtesy more options to learn at, at any given time where they meet up with experienced miners or workers on site this is the work placements that we provided welding warehouse assay lab you name it uh, it was available for them and they were part participating right from the beginning getting up at four o'clock to get their breakfast and then they go to the lineups that that's where they discuss uh, safety what happened uh, the day before what's happening today and what uh, what is our goal today so they participated we also have the golden guys which is golden rules that we abide by on the mine site they learn the, the do's and don'ts and the safety aspect they also were provided tickets like uh, lockout, tagout, um, confined spaces, and whatever else that they needed to work in whatever department they were assigned to. Oh, this is uh, just just for the um, <clears throat> our audience. There's a video on the AMSTEP uh, delivery. It's uh, on Vimeo, so if you're interested in hearing what, what the youth had to say, their experiences and their stories, uh, participating in the AMSTEP program. I encourage you to click on that link and you can watch the, the video. It's about half an hour and it's very insightful and um, you'll, hear direct, you'll, hear, you'll hear directly from the youth. So I uh, can't play the video now, but I provided that link for you guys. Next. <clears throat> uh, one of the, uh, the findings on the, the job experience is um, the, um, the participants uh, needed to know that uh, the reasons why we're providing and that we, they were encouraged to to ask questions that that showed that they were learning uh, and the native culture uh, I'll say that we we prefer to observe than do hands-on rather than ask questions and then you know when that, they had to change that that in a way so that they would show that it, there was an interest or they're receiving things and I and I made a reference to when you're in the classroom you see the teacher ask questions the teacher wants to know that the way what what she's bringing forth is that you're receiving it and you're understanding there's a there's a uh, something taking place and so those are one of the things that we encourage on a day-to-day -day basis um, 
one of the things uh, was trying to get used to uh, getting up early in the morning and finding out different solutions, getting them to alarm clocks, doing a buddy system where they would go and make sure uh, each each one was up or knock on their door and also providing an opportunity to um, get some experience and put it on their resume and say this is a part of the program that we, we participated in. Uh, also, uh, it was a cross-cultural uh, learning for uh, for the mentors and the students, and a lot of our uh, employees are non-native, and uh, having First Nations youth working under them was uh, uh, the feedback that we received was uh, it was awesome. Like they and the, it just changed their sense of uh, uh, understanding of uh, working with First Nations youth, and it was like a it was a learning experience for both, and so. Uh, it was a very important aspect of this uh, AMSTEP program for the young people. Thanks. <clears throat> All right, so graduation is a, an important uh, event for, for our AMSTEP participants. So each graduation occurs either at the Muscle Lake Mine or directly in the community. So it's an opportunity for their family to to celebrate with their, 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 uh, <clears throat> their all the certificates they get from Oshki, from Mir, from Cambrian College, and from the various training providers. And <clears throat> what we're really trying to do is really increase their employability, uh, so they do have an enhanced resume, and they, they have the necessary uh, qualifications for entry-level employment at the Muscle Lake Mine. Uh, next. <clears throat> Uh, after the the participants completed the the, the job experience, uh, they were exposed to different managers, supervisors, and uh, and and contractors, and uh, this opened the door for them to to have the conversation. And one of our goals uh, when it came to having this AMSTEP program was to prepare individuals to uh, uh, be successful at pre-entry uh, positions at the mine site. So that included um, having one-on-one -on -one, uh, uh, discussions with the individuals, having exposure to the to the supervisors and their work ethics, and uh, um, and when that that uh, transition took place, it it, it created a, an opportunity for uh, supervisors to create positions for them and and uh, learning more about the young people. And and one of the things that we did encourage the young people is that don't um, get frustrated if you don't find a position right away, but in between that time frame of when the program was completed to maybe the summer program, because we did have summer programs coming up, um, um, the, co the contractors let them know when the influx of uh, hiring would take place, so what would they do in between preparing themselves. One of the main things that we encouraged was always uh, ensuring that they lived a healthy lifestyle while back home. Um, you know, finding other alternatives that rather than having a social life, uh, make it a recreational life where they're uh, they're they're thinking more healthy and then how to pass that pre-med, I guess you can say. Um, so this was giving them a, a another whole ball field to work to play in, which is the mining field itself, and uh, giving them that information. We did uh, bring on a few people from as soon as they completed the program. Uh, which is um, 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 helpful for them, and also gives up hope, gives hope to those that did not complete the the program themselves. But the opportunity, we know we have a handful of people in each community that do have their grade 12, and they choose not to go back into the cities because uh, four years from home is a long time, and they miss out on living off the land and being part of the family. And so these were some of the young people that we found with grade 12, and then. This is an opportunity to educate them and what uh, what uh, what's available at the mine site. Um, so these are just some of the performance indicators. Again, uh, we are funded by both the federal and provincial governments, so we are responsible for achieving uh, <clears throat> meeting some numbers. Uh, I'm not going to go through this. If you can just click next. <clears throat> Again, we do follow-ups with our with our graduates, and uh, we do three months, six months, and one year follow-up. And we just like to know Ashki where um, uh, what they're doing, what their needs are. Some are interested in getting their grade 12, 
some are interested in pursuing post-secondary education and training, and some are interested in pursuing entry-level <coughs> positions at Gold Corp or, or elsewhere. Next. Uh, Chantal Shakane is um, one of our successful graduates. Uh, she's from North Caribou Lake First Nation. She completed the AMSTEP program back in 2015. After graduation, she was hired by um, Gold Corp working in the uh, the Corp yeah. as a cord cutter. <clears throat> uh, while working at Muscle Wise Mine, she continued her education here at Ashki Pamachuan. She enrolled in the business program when she graduated with a one year business certificate. Uh, she is currently pursuing a career in business administration and, and aspires to be employed at the administration uh, unit at Muscle Wise Mine. And she credits Oshka and Gold Corp for opening doors and creating new opportunities for her and her um, her peers, in, not only in North Caribou Lake, but the other communities too. So she's uh, on her way to a rewarding career in the mining industry. Okay. Um, we're about 10 to 1. Uh, Bridget, do you want to, or Sarah, Pascal, how do you want to proceed at this time? Do you want to open it up to Q&A? <laughs> sure. Sure. So if anybody has any questions for Gordon and Joyce, please, uh, you can submit them um, in that little um, area on the screen at the bottom right. Um, we'll start with one question. So, uh, Gordon, Joyce, out of the deliveries that you did with AMSTEF, what was the um, most important lesson learned out of your deliveries? Well, um, I'll speak first. Um, based on my uh, experience, mm -hmm. um, so again, this is really this is a multi-partner effort. So there's a lot of partners that work together to put the program together and to deliver the program. And um, we do we do sit down and evaluate each each intake. If you can just go back to the lessons learned slide there. <clears throat> so one some of the lessons learned is participant readiness. Uh, we found that not everyone, not every youth has the physical, mental, or emotional well-being to work away from their home community. Uh, we've had youth who, like Joyce said, have social issues, uh, could be family issues, and so that plays a part in whether or not they, they succeed in the program. <clears throat> uh, classroom management, uh, most of the time we only have one trainer in the classroom. And being at the muscle white mine, you really need two trainers. Uh, if any student has an issue, um, you need another trainer to actually escort them to, to, to the nursing station or, or what have you. So there really needs to be two trainers on site at all times. Uh, program management, uh, we need to do a better job of actually coordinating the, the curriculum between our partners. There was some duplication of of content with the employment services. So our partners really need to be part of the orientation, part of the planning. <clears throat> um, elder support, um, again, our, our youth need their elders. They need that support. Um, we couldn't get an elder on site at all times. We usually had an elder who uh, frequented the mine site for one or two days at a time. But really, these youth, they need a, an elder on site at all times to, to help them with their, their personal issues. Culture shock, that was also a big issue. Um, <clears throat> maybe Joyce can speak to that. Well, one of the things I've mentioned, like uh, <clears throat> previously, how um, they were part of the, the, mine, the mine life, I guess you'd say, being exposed to whatever an individual would work on a 12, 12 hour shift. And actually, um, having the the facility is just like a little town that we have at the Muscle White Town, and and some of the things they don't have in their community, which would be the the cafeteria, the food is uh, you have to uh, maintain a physical regimen while living there, while, while working there, and that was one of the things like it was uh, 
They had everything. You can go as many times as you want up to the lines as long as you eat your food. And a lot of them gained a lot of weight. And uh, it was, um, and I think um, having um, having to um, um, try to balance that. They will also have a gym there and uh, um, access to internet. And uh, I think that was one of the things that's trying to uh, separate yourself from your the 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 way you would usually live at the community than at at work. Uh, a lot of them had to um, try to stay away from their games, uh, staying up all night and having to go to work in the morning. And, and it, it was uh, like basically a culture shock. Uh, one of the things that we did have on site is we have an employee system program where we have a counselor that comes to a, our mind site for uh, 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 one week out of a month. And uh, it just so happened that uh, this uh, counselor would happen to be on site at the same time as uh, our, our participants, so it worked. Uh, it worked out pretty well where they accessed our our uh, counselor, but uh, uh, there were times when she wasn't there. So these were some of the things that we had to deal with. And uh, I think um, overall the work experience um, for the individuals was successful, but there were some areas that need to. Uh, how do we address it when when the next time comes around? Mm -hmm. Joyce, a question for you. Does the camp provide culturally appropriate foods for, um, you know, your Aboriginal employees? Um, we do have um, um, our traditional foods that come up every now and then. Like, uh, basically, we do have, like, fish, but uh, once again, they're, uh, they're uh, cooked, like, uh, by a chef, so having to get that taste, and then we have the the, the bannock and uh, you know like whatever the main staple. Mind you, we're talking about uh, young people that uh, that uh, uh, um, different types of food preparation. The way they prepare the food is totally different. So, but then we have the the fries and poutine too. So we sort of try to <laughs> <Yay. take> the <laughs> audience. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> Thanks for that. We had another question come in here. Um, and I think it's a two-part, kind of one for you, part for you, Gordon, and part for you, Joyce. Um, Gordon, is there any targets or goals for you to have in the AMSEP program of uh, women participate, young women? And then, Joyce, for you, is there, on the other side, an expectation, goal, target to hire some young women that, uh, that come on site there? Yeah, when we do the recruitment workshop, the three-day recruitment workshop, we uh, promote the program in the community, and we encourage women to to apply or to participate in the workshop. The workshop is more of a um, opportunity for the youth to learn about uh, the mining industry and the careers in the mining industry, and we encourage both uh, male and female to to participate. Our, our numbers indicate that we do need to do a better job because uh, I, I'd probably say maybe of all the uh, workshop participants, maybe 10 or 20 percent are female. Um, and I think that that may be uh, traditionally women work, when we're talking First Nation communities, the women will do community uh, service type of jobs, either health or education. I think there needs to be more awareness of uh, careers in mining and the skilled trades that, that needs to happen. And that's one of the reasons why we, we purchased this mobile trades training lab. We want to go to all the communities and open up those type of opportunities to to the um, female population in the Anishinaabe Nation. Uh, one of the things that um, our corporate office, our head office, uh, uh, made a strong, bold uh, comment to the his audience is that one of the areas that Gold Corp was failing was to um, create opportunities for the female to participate in uh, trades or any other opportunity in the mining sector. So that makes a big bold statement and that um, this is one of the areas that we would be uh, uh, working towards. In regards to the AMSTEP, we have two young ladies that were in the program that are currently uh, employed at uh, Muscle White, which one was uh, Chantal at the core cutting, and we also have uh, Ashley, which is she's in the mill, 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 working in the mill. And so uh, uh, they've been there the longest. I don't want to say nothing bad about those that have been there already, but uh, um, 
and also we're looking towards having free entry uh, positions in the um, underground uh, also with the pre-trades we're just going to be opening that up and recruiting our First Nations youth from our signatory communities and uh, as I mentioned before there are some people in the community that do have their grade 12 so for us to get them ready for the pre-trades we're going to encourage them to get to work towards their grade 12 math um, with the expectation of young women that uh, uh, goes across uh, the board in, in any culture any ethnic background like uh, we're making a point to ensure that we give women an uh, opportunity to work at the Gold Corp Muscle Life. We also have uh, creating choices, growing choices within the company that uh, uh, trains women, uh, giving them a voice and uh, making a plan of what the, they would like to see themselves doing within the company, like a career goal, whatever, trade or engineering uh, uh, part of the uh, Gold Corp that they see themselves in. How do they work towards that? So we get a buy-in from all the managers and the supervisors on how we can provide support to ensure that they get that opportunity, um, whatever trade or uh, position that they like to work towards. Excellent. Well, thank you very much. Well, I think uh, our time is up, so um, we'd like to, um, we're going to end the Q&A uh, right now, and thank you all for your questions, and thank you, Gordon and Joyce, for sharing your expertise. Um, your knowledge on this important topic for us. Um, we'd like to stay connected, so let's continue the conversation in our online space. If you have questions for Gordon or for us, uh, please post, post them online and we'll do our best to get them answered uh, for you. Um, so we'd like to uh, wish everybody a great rest of your Tuesday afternoon. Uh, we will see you next month for our webcast with Magnet. Uh, a social enterprise of Ryerson University who will be sharing with us uh, their successful inclusive uh, recruitment techniques. So again, thank you everybody for joining us. Thank you Gordon and Joyce and um, let's, let's stay connected. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Have a great day. You too. Bye-bye.